begin with this whole case is there's so many things that are left for the interpretation. The gremlin might not be involved. The gremlin might not be involved. poster that bears a composite drawing of a suspect seen in the parking lot where Timmy King was abducted reads the following. He is a white male, 25 to 30 years of age, 5 feet 8 to 5 feet 10. He is 150 to 170 pounds and athletically built. He may be living or associating closely with another person. He must be acquainted with Oakland County. He has an employment situation that allows freedom of movement. He may live in an area that allows him to keep children without creating suspicion among neighbors. He may have altered his physical appearance. It is all theory. A theory, there is one killer. A theory, he selects at random. A theory, he's affected by winter. A theory, he is playing a game. And a theory, he is driving a blue gremlin. No one knows the theories better than Lieutenant Robertson of the task force. That's the whole trouble, again, with this whole case is... There's so many things that are left for the interpretation. And if we're interpreting right, uh, great. If we're in error in various points, uh, then that, of course, makes it difficult. And, and I guess that's why we're really not locked in on any one thing, that we have to be a little bit flexible in, in saying such things as it could be two people. It could be a man and a woman. Um... The gremlin might not be involved. Uh, we, have to, we have to be that flexible. Final conclusion? Few conclusions. The only thing police really know is that four young children were mysteriously murdered and the search for their killer is not over. You're listening to The David Newman Show on WXYZ Radio. Tonight, Winter's Fear, The Children, The Killer, the search. The search began as a typical homicide investigation during the wintry days of February 1976 when Mark Stebbins was found murdered in Southfield. Ten months later, Jill Robinson was murdered in Troy. This time, Troy and Royal Oak Police began searching for a killer, not knowing they might be looking for the same person or persons who killed Mark Stebbins. It was when Christine Mahalich disappeared in January of this year that the police and public became acutely aware that someone was preying on the children of South Oakland County. The four departments already investigating child murders joined Berkeley Police in the search for Christine. The state police entered the picture, and the Oakland County Task Force was born. After the murder of Tim King, two more police departments joined the search, and a federal grant was received funding the investigation. The state police brought in a computer. Evidence gathered by the eight different departments was turned over to the task force. The gathering of that evidence by the local police sparked the first minor controversy of the investigation. Oakland County Sheriff Johannes Spreen sharply criticized the handling of the Mark Stebbins investigation, charging that valuable evidence may have been lost when investigators removed Mark's clothing in Southfield before the body was taken to the Oakland County Morgue in Pontiac. County Prosecutor Brooks Patterson feels Spreen's criticism was out of order. I'm familiar with the Mark Stebbins investigation and... Uh... I know the Ferndale Department, I know Red Gary the Chief, and I know that they have an excellent uh, reputation uh, locally, uh, and certainly in this office as being a fine department. Uh, I'm aware of the criticism leveled by uh, Sheriff Spreen about crime scene investigation, about preservation of evidence by uh, Ferndale, and later on by the city of Southfield, and uh, quite frankly, we're talking candidly, uh, Spreen had his facts wrong. His report was irresponsible to the public because he did not have his facts in order. It was not to be the last time Spring would criticize the investigation. One of the major efforts in the search for the task force has centered on running down thousands of tips which the task force has openly sought from the public. Sheriff Spring has called that effort too much too late. When we have a call for tips and big rewards set up so that we get 12,000 tips, I think we have misuse 
there that uh, really, frankly, it gluts up our investigation process. Uh, I, you know, uh, at that point in time, you get uh, the case being used as a lottery with the prize being uh, $70,000, I think it was at the time, and the porn being a friend or a neighbor who they thought uh, they might be weird. We've got parents turning in their sons, brothers turning in their brothers, and members turning in their pastors. In defending the use of tips, Task Force Lieutenant Robert Robertson says it has enabled the investigators to narrow the list of possible suspects. But Robertson adds that when you investigate thousands of tips and still don't have the killer, it's difficult to avoid becoming complacent. <laughs> 